Tenacity and transparency have been the steadfast tenants of Jim Hazel's career. Across five decades, Jim has been a major driver in the evolution of Australia's retirement and seniors housing industry, quick to recognise and grow new opportunities, while always keeping the care for residents at the core of every decision. As an executive, investor, advocate and innovator, Jim has made an unparalleled contribution to Australian property and the way future generations will live in retirement. Jim was born in Albany, moving to Adelaide at age two. Jim grew up in a working class family with both his parents' schooling cut short by the war. Consequently, they were fiercely determined that Jim and his brother would receive an excellent education and be the first in the family to attend university. After finishing school, Jim couldn't afford to study full time. So he worked for National Mutual in the short-term money market while studying economics part-time at the University of Adelaide. The Australian money markets at this time were burgeoning and Jim joined Darling & Co in Adelaide, which became Schroeder's and was growing at a brisk pace. He quickly made his mark. When appointed a director of Schroeder's in 1980, Jim was the second youngest ever to achieve this position. In 1982, Jim was seconded to Schroeder's and chartered in Hong Kong to establish a foreign exchange and money trading function, bringing with him a wealth of experience from working in Australia's sophisticated markets. Jim was different in the most positive way possible. He came to his roles from Adelaide to Sydney without any air of entitlement. It was a breath of fresh air, he was humble, but he matched that with a superior intellect and understanding of what was expected in dynamic changing markets. Jim understood diversity way before it was recognised as essential. So he's always been really supportive of women in the workplace. And I have countless examples of when I thought I was either out of my depth, not doing a good job, not equipped, that Jim has been rock solid in his support of me, and I see him doing exactly the same with other women. Jim was approached to become treasurer of the State Bank of South Australia in 1984, and over the next six years, he went on to establish the bank's treasury and foreign exchange trading capability, a comprehensive offshore borrowing program and its investment banking business. Jim's next challenge was to advise and implement the historic merger of the Cooperative Building Society of South Australia Limited with the Hindmarsh Building Society in 1992 to become one of the country's largest and most stable building societies. When the merge entity applied for a banking licence, the Reserve Bank instructed the Building Society to dispose of its 14 retirement villages, kicking off Jim's involvement in the industry. The bank licence was secured and the Adelaide Bank was established on the 1st of January 1994. It was a tough time to be selling property with the impact of the early 1990s market crash still being felt. However, Jim recognised that the new industry tax ruling 9424 provided a tax treatment that would encourage investment in seniors housing and led the orderly disposal of the portfolio. In 2000, Jim exited executive life to build his diverse board career. He became an independent director of Elders Rural Bank, a joint venture between Elders and Bendigo Bank, upon the granting of its banking licence in June 2000, and subsequently became chairman of the Rural Bank. When Bendigo merged with Adelaide Bank, Jim became a director and managed the internalisation of the Elders Rural Bank. Concurrent to serving as a director on a number of public and private company boards, Jim provided funding and other advice within the retirement village industry. Little did he know he was about to embark upon the toughest challenge of his professional life, where all his fortitude and integrity would come to the fore. In 2003, businessmen Robert Champion de Krepney and Ron Walker bought a stake in the publicly listed retirement village developer, manager and operator, Prime Life and asked Jim to be CEO. It was a stressful time and one where Jim characteristically tackled adversity through transparency and resolve. 
During his two and a half years at the helm, Jim wound up 23 unregistered management investment schemes, advanced good projects and exited the bad, and dealt with a myriad of colourful characters. A new residential aged care accommodation bond prudential scheme was introduced by the Commonwealth Government as a direct result of Prime Life's issues. In the event, the business was recapitalised and reshaped and ultimately sold to Lendlease. Had it failed, it would have been a catastrophe for the fledgling retirement village industry. The way Jim's shaped the retirement living industry is that he saved what was a very broken business and Prime Life went on to become Babcock and Brown communities and then through further consolidation became Lendlease Retirement Living and now Keaton which is the largest pure play retirement living operator in Australia. Jim has built foundations, he's developed future leaders and through his work at Prime Life he saved many communities from financial ruin. Jim's leadership style is unique in that he is a very calm leader. Uh, what I loved about him during the volatile times at Prime Life is he would go into a board meeting, he would lead a discussion as the most experienced and intelligent person in the room, but he would come out and he would treat all employees with respect at all levels. Jim's deep involvement in retirement living and seniors housing was to continue, this time in the establishment of Ingenia Communities, Born out of the reshaping of the ING Real Estate Community Living Fund in the wake of the global financial crisis, experienced retirement living executive Simon Owen was brought in to exit the fund's offshore assets, and he sought and received ING's blessing to internalise management and launch the business as an independent entity. Jim was appointed Chair and Simon CEO and Managing Director. Jim and Simon shared a belief that land lease communities also known as manufactured home estates and well-established in America, but relatively unknown in Australia, had strong potential, particularly as the model offered an affordable entry point into seniors' housing. Under their leadership, Ingenia embarked upon a bold new strategy, and today, Ingenia Communities Group is in the ASX 200, with a market capitalisation of around $2 billion. The history with Jim and I goes back nearly 20 years. What really attracted me was the opportunity to work uh, with Jim very closely. It's really his um, you know, quiet, understated presence, his wisdom, his tremendous counsel, and, and the great life experience that Jim brought to the role as chairman um, of Ingenia. I think at the time we launched Ingenia together, we had nearly 20 years of experience in the Australian seniors market. We both felt very passionately that there was a large unmet opportunity in the more affordable end of the seniors housing market and I've learnt so much off Jim. Uh, he's without exception the best director and chair that I've ever had the opportunity to work with. You know, for me he's been absolutely instrumental to the success of Ingenia. Well, I always start by telling people that Jim is an extraordinary human being. Uh, he's an extraordinary chair, uh, but it's really the fact that he is a person of such integrity, he cares. He cares about people and it's a attribute of his that I admire enormously. Leadership is uh, hard to define sometimes but you know when it's missing. Jim doesn't come and command the room. He comes and gets the best from everyone who's in the room and he does that with focus, with humility, um, but again he holds us to account as well and that's what makes him so valuable because you're not having to listen to five different people, you just really have to listen to one. I will never be able to walk into a boardroom and not hear Jim's voice. And um, I know that we will miss Jim, but we know how to find him and we know he's not going far. So he'll be on speed dial for quite a while. Throughout his career, Jim has generously given back to the community and property industry, generously sharing his expertise and foresight. He has served as a director of the Retirement Living Council since its creation in 2012, and before that was an active participant in the Retirement Villages Association. He has regularly represented the interests of industry to various state governments on legislation, as well as providing industry briefings on critical finance and capital issues. 
His leadership within the retirement living sector was recognised when Jim was inducted as a life member of the Retirement Living Council in 2023. Look, for 50 years, the retirement living sector was essentially considered to be a property play. It was focused on real estate. Uh, but in the last 10 years or so, Jim Hazel has helped you know, evolve this wonderful sector to make sure that it's focused on care and support services for its key clientele. And of course, that is older Australians who are looking for dignity and respect you know, in the way that they live into their retirement. Um, Jim has been at the centre of uh, you know, the evolution of the seniors and retirement living sector. One of Jim's legacies, I think, is helping with the evolution, maturity and development of the seniors and retirement living industry. This sector is about care and support services for older Australians. Jim has been at the front end of that process, making sure that we're evolving this sector, doubling down on our offerings, making sure that the amenity is there for older Australians as they're you know, living into their retirement. Um, Jim's legacy, yeah, I think, is what we're seeing right now. Someone from the seniors living industry is being inducted into the Australian Property Hall of Fame. That's not happened before. And that means that we're bringing profile and interest to this particular part of the property asset class uh, and I think that's a wonderful outcome. Jim is passionate about the future of the retirement living industry and the importance of providing a suite of senior housing choices across our communities. His current board roles include being a director of COTA Australia, which represents older Australians, chair of the Barossa, Hills and Florio Local Health Network and council member and pro-chancellor of the University of South Australia. He is also Deputy Chancellor of the New Adelaide University, which is being formed by the amalgamation of the University of South Australia and the University of Adelaide. Today, we induct Jim Hazel in the Australian Property Hall of Fame in honour of his outstanding contribution to retirement living and seniors housing, as the industry goes from strength to strength as a quality asset class. He is the first South Australian and the first leader from the retirement living and seniors housing industry to join the Hall of Fame. The results of his decades of commitment, bold thinking, tenacity and transparency will be enjoyed by senior Australians for generations to come.